It's the Dosinco Project. Money pouring in, clientele growing down. With your host, Dosinco. Let's go! What up, everybody? You are now tuned in to the Dosinco Project, where we talk about business, entertainment, motivation, and mindset. I have a very special guest with us in the building today. A powerful guest in the building with us today. He is, in my opinion, one of the most impactful designers and artists of our time. Wow. Born and raised in Philadelphia, he is the epitome of what it means to get it out the mud. A self-taught contemporary artist who has worked with major brands like the NFL, Nike, Mercedes, Topps Trading Card Company, Beats by Dre, and so many others. He is very sought after as it pertains to the world of art by a wide variety of celebrities. They collect his NFTs, figurines, and paintings. You may have seen his iconic JP Money Bear publicly displayed in places like the Philadelphia International Airport, the Fiddler Club, Boyd's, Spin, and all across the United States. Everybody, please welcome. Wow. King Saladin. <laughs> Did I top that Oskino that intro? Crazy. That was crazy. That was amazing right there, man. I'm, I'm honored, bro. Thank Listen, you so brother, much, man. This, this has been, well, shout out to your manager, Oren, man. Let me yeah, tell you. Oren's it, the best, it, man. It, it's, been, it's been a year in the making. I'm really? so glad. A year, man. I've been, I've been working with him. Well, it took I've been so working. Long, no, man. it only took so long because I was a nobody. You know, I'm trying to blow man, it up no, little you by always, little. You always been somebody, man. We just ain't know who you are. Right, we right. No, meet. exactly. We just ain't me. Exactly. So, um, you know, what I want to do is, aside from all of your accolades, right, you know, obviously you're well known for your artwork and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. um, talk about your childhood. Talk about how you grew up. Oh, man. Um, I grew up like a normal Philadelphia kid, you know what I mean, in the 90s, um, early 2000s. So uh, I had an amazing family. I'm going to say that. I'm going to definitely give my family the love up first. You know what I mean? Uh, my mom was super hardworking. Um, my grandfather, my grandmom. I had an amazing stepfather, you know what I mean, that came in at the perfect time in my life to make me become the man that I am. Um, it was good. It was good, man. You know what I mean? And it was like I grew up in Philly at a time where it wasn't like it was like you could be a kid. You okay. know what I'm saying? It was like. It was always that OG that would like kind of straighten you out on the block too. Mm -hmm. um, it was a lot of guidance. Nobody really stared you to do the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. um, I can't. I think I came up in the golden era in Philly. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Yeah. So when did you decide um, that 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 painting would be the lane that you would move into? Because I know watching your documentary. You talked about working a nine to five, right? And mm -hmm. then I think you stopped around 2011. Yeah. So what yep. made you finally decide to say that, that um, that's your lane? Well, honestly, man, like art always been my thing. Okay. Um, I come from an art background. My grandfather was somewhat of an artist. My uncle was an artist, but they never took it to the point where, you know, they um, could like feed their family or like get to that level. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, man, so, all right. So around 2011, July 4th, actually, mm -hmm. I was just telling this story earlier. Um, I quit my job. and it What was were like, you doing? I was working, well, before that, I was working, um, I, was a, I was a loan officer at one point. Okay. And then the recession hit in like 2007, 2008. And then I got to the point where it was like, I had to figure out just to get a regular job because right. I was in the real estate so much. And it was not a situation where I went to school for real estate. It was like, mm -hmm. I was blessed to run into somebody who owned their own situation, which was my cousin's uncle. Okay. And he lived in Jersey. We used to go over his crib to cookouts. And he was just like, yo, you got something in you, man. I know you could do this. Right. I'm like, bro, I don't know nothing about real estate. He was like, I could teach you. I know I could teach you. Okay. So it was one of those type of situations where I was blessed into it. Um, around 2008, you know, all the banks was crazy. It was like crazy, the recession. Yeah, yeah. So I couldn't close a loan, you know what I mean? So it was like you could sit in the office all day. If you ain't closing a loan, I was 100% commission. Wow. So, you know, that type of situation was like it was only but for so long that you can kind of like win it. Right. So um, I started just asking all my friends that was like, you know, my focus friends, like, yo, is anybody hiring? Mm -hmm. Like I had to let go of my ego, you know what I'm saying? I went from like learning real estate, you know what I'm saying, just buying my first caddy, getting my right. first apart apartment, making 10000 sometimes every month, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. off different deals and just like, accomplishing something that I didn't think I could can accomplish, you know right. what I mean? And to have it, like, go down the drain in three years, mm -hmm. and I'm still young, you know what I'm saying? I started doing all that when I was, like, 23. Okay. So, like, 25 was, like, the hardest years of my life, bro. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of, like, when you're hoping that things are going a little bit smoother. So right. it was, like, my thing was flip-flop. So um, early I learned that, like, life got a lot of valleys and peaks, bro. And it's, like, 
it's never over. You know what I'm saying? It's right. never over when one thing cl- when one door closes, another one open. But you always got to be optimistic and really on your grind to find those things too, yep. and lose your ego as well to the point where it's like, all right, um, I might have to take a back seat for the next two, three years. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. To like no, makes sense. to be able to be the driver one day. You know what I mean? So um, I quit my job. Um, my man JP, rest rest in peace, JP, which the toy and everything is yep. inspired by. Um, he was like the super motivator, bro. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Dude was in the streets, but he was super intelligent. So at the time, I'm just trying to say he was in the streets because he was the one that was trying to get me to be everywhere he was. Right. So he was the dude that ate at Rouge, used to go just hang out in Rittenhouse Square all day. You so know what I'm saying? So he exposed you to a different life. Super exposed me. I remember the first time we was in Rouge, and I ordered chicken fingers. And he was like, bro, you don't sell chicken fingers in here, man. Like, You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like that type of guy, when we used to go to New York, um, party at Greenhouse. He's buying tables at Greenhouse. I'm wearing Nike sweatsuits up there. Right. He like, bro, you can't wear no Nike. Like, Come on, man. We're going to Hugo Boss. You feel what I'm saying? So right. it was like, he exposed me to so much, so much before it was my turn to really do it. Okay. And he uh, untimely passed away from brain cancer in 2013. So he got me to quit my job. He got me on point, showed me how to like be around people with money, which is a mm-hmm. thing that you don't be around in Philly. You know what I'm saying? I was more like green. Like if I was around like a dope car or nice nice house i would be like kind of extra like damn it's crazy right and he would be like yo like chill you know what i'm saying Act normal. so when he passed away it was like all these things came to me you know what i mean so back to me quitting my job um he was like the main motivator between behind that quitting my job he was just like he used to call my job the plantation like bro mm. you going back to the plantation go to new york with me today i'm like i gotta work go up here with mm. me i gotta work you're like damn what people gonna see your gift bro like when somebody gonna be able to really like see what you do right and i'm just like Bro, I gotta make sure I make my car payment. You know, like mm-hmm. all the regular stuff in, in life that you like, yo, I don't wanna lose my car. That we I don't wanna, slaves too. Yeah, Absolutely. I don't wanna get kicked out of my apartment thinking like your apartment is gonna be the house that you're living in after. You know what I mean? Right. So it was like just a lot. And he was just like there, like every day, bro, like just supporting my dream, pushing my dream. He got his, he, he bought his, my first painting that he lied about and said his sister gave him the money because his sister was somebody we looked up to. She was doing her thing, had her own business, nice ass house. Yep. So, that first painting, I took off of work to do it, like $500. He's okay. like, oh, my sister gave me 500 for you to do a painting. When you going to have it done? And I'm just like, what? So I was like <laughs> super on it, you know what I'm saying? So he used to do little stuff like that to just like. Motivate you. To motivate me, you know what I'm saying? Because he used to always say, yo, him, stop trying to be regular, bro. Like, why are you trying to be regular? And I was like, what you talking about? I'm just trying to like not really like do a bunch of shit to go to jail. I just right. like, you know what I mean? A job would be cool because I'm not trying to be outside for eight hours a day. That's when you start beefing with people. You start just running in the niggas for no prop, no yep. reason. It's like a whole lot. So my thing was like, yo, I'm my man's getting money. That's not really my lane. Um, I'ma just try to figure out my way my way. You know what I'm saying? And he always respected that because I was, I was the only person that he could be around that he could really trust. Like right. he could leave money at my mom's crib. He could leave money or something. You know what I mean? Because it yeah. wasn't like, he ain't into what I'm into. He gonna run off and try to do, you know what I mean? Right. So it was like, it was like he was just a major blessing, man. And he showed me the the finer things in life before I was able to obtain them and see them myself. What what made him out of all the kids in the neighborhood, all of the people? What made him gravitate to you and have a special interest in you? I don't know, bro. We like we met at, uh, at Elmwood Skating Ring. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. We met at Elmwood Skating Ring, and I just remember him always wearing like. Bill Cosby sweaters. He was always <laughs> like a dresser. You know right. what I'm saying? He never dressed like the young boys, just like a regular polo shirt, a polo hoodie. He never, like, he would dress like how you dressing. Right. But we, like, 16. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, whatever, you know what I mean? Had a lot of girls. And we just, like, started talking. And I remember I asked him one day, like, yo, why you always wear sweaters? He was like, you ain't on this. You ain't on this shit. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? I used to be like, all right, whatever. So then um, I used to go to University City, but then I got transferred to a school that was like in the Northeast. Okay. He went to William Penn. So then we seen each other down in the sub, taking the orange line one day. And I'm like, yo, what's up? You the boy to be a skating. He's like, yeah, da, da, da. So we just get cool from there. Um, I was playing basketball real heavy at the time. So he used to always come to all the games. I don't know. I honestly don't know how we connected so tight. But when we connected, it was like a, like two peas in a pod, bro. I like it. I lived in Southwest at the time. And he lived on 55th and um, like 55th and Market in West okay. Philly. So that if you know, if you're from Philly, that's a long, that's far. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I always would be over his crib. He introduced me to everybody around that way. Everybody like took a liking to me. Um, I don't know. We became like brothers, dog, overnight. Wow. So he passes, right? You you don't have a job. 
right? Because he put you on yeah, that. He, he 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 made you strictly independent. 2011, July 4th. What happened after that? After he passed. After he passed away, you realized you no longer have your motivator by your side. Mm -hmm. What's the next steps to keep that to keep that train going? Um. So, 2000. <coughs> so 2011 is when I started that journey of just like living what I wanted to do, living what I, was, I saw in my head. Um, 2013, he passes away. By that time, I'm already living in Miami for a year. I got another friend that I'm in Cali with. So I was like, I was like living on couches, dog, for like three, four years. Wow. Just like whoever I was connected to, I'm calling them. Yo, what's up? What y'all doing? What y'all up to? You, you still in L.A.? Yeah, we still in L.A. Did it? Yo, let me fly out that joint real quick. Yo, he ain't come on. Because I always had a great relationship with everybody that I ran across with. You know what I'm saying? I never like snake nobody. Never was mm -hmm. into none of that. So it was like. If I ain't seen you in three years, it's just because we've been doing different things. It was never like, oh, I don't mess with boy no more or nothing. You right. know what I mean? So I could always get back to people. And around that time, 2011 to 2013, is when Instagram came out. Okay. So I was reconnecting with a lot of people just scrolling. Oh, mm -hmm. damn, that's my man. Let me follow him. Oh, wow, that's my people. Let me follow him. So um, in, that, in that aspect, it was kind of like... I was just moving, bro. I was just moving on faith. It was like I ain't really had no money. I just had enough money to eat. I had enough money to look good. And I had enough money to fly back and forth home when I needed to. And that money that you were making was strictly off of the artwork that strictly, you were selling? Strictly off artwork, bro. T-shirts. Wow. Selling T-shirts out my trunk. I remember I was selling glasses, um, doing sneaker customizations, leather jacket, anything, bro. Wow. Like, like almost anything. And that's how I was really just putting myself out there because, like, everybody knew me for basketball. Right. And my goal was for, like, me to reinvent myself mm -hmm. because I never wanted to be one of those guys that was, like, still, like, talking about, like, when you were 17 but you 26. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, yo, remember we won the public league championship and I was the man and then I used to mess right. with, what's the name from North? I ain't never want to be that dude. So I was like, damn, I got to really figure out, like, like what, like, what my gift is, like, what I can do where it's not, like, a million people lining up to do it. Mm. That's the same height as me. To, you know what I'm saying? Because basketball right. is like cattle. It was like everybody's 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", 6'5". You know what I'm saying? So, so it was now you got to like, distinguish yourself from yeah, everybody you gotta, else. You know, so um, that was my biggest thing, bro. That was, like, not to cut you off, but I kind of forget what the question was. Yeah, so, going. so, 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 you know, from, from the time that, that, that JP passed away. Right, 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 right. To you actually being out there independent, how were you able to sustain yourself? You answered the question. Okay, so. okay. So, yeah, I was just, I was just like pretty much putting my ego to the side, bro, mm -hmm. and just really just like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, I figured out what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, anytime you're from Philly and you can make a hundred, couple hundred dollars and you're doing it legally, that's probably the thing you're supposed that's to be a doing. Day. You feel what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like I did that so many summers to the point where it was like I just had to get outside my element. Like, let me take this to Miami. You know what I'm saying? I might have to sleep on somebody's couch, but I'm going to meet more people, and I'm going to take all this Philly somewhere else. You know mm. what I'm saying? Because in Philly, it's like we kind of like crabs we around. We crabs in a barrel, but mm. it's, a, it's, it's so many people like us around that we can't really, like, stand out. You feel what I'm saying? Where right. it's like even with a gift or just how funny somebody is. You know how many people I know that's funny as Kevin Hart? Not mm. as funny as Kevin Hart, mm -hmm. but it's like. Everybody I knew in my life was funny as hell. You feel what I'm saying? It's so part when, of culture, it's too. It's a part right. of our culture. It's right. a part of sitting around on the block, busting on somebody. Yo, bro, yeah. It's just like what we do. So it's right. kind of like, but once you take that outside of your element, you a star at it because everybody else don't get looked at like that or everybody mm -hmm. else don't have that same culture. So I heard, I heard so many no's in Philly to the point where I didn't care about hearing no's from people that I didn't know. Right. Everybody I knew told me no. So it was like when I go to Miami or if I go to L.A. or something like that, these people have no clue who I am. So mm -hmm. I'll go in any store, in any gallery, or anywhere and talk to these people, you know what I'm saying, and show them what I do. Now I got a thing called Instagram where I don't have to carry around a portfolio. I can just be like, yo. Right off your account. Yo, this is what I did. And mm -hmm. everybody will be like, you ain't do that. And I'm just like, I did do that. I'm like, because it's an artist. It's not like I'm like, yo, I rap right. or something super common. It's like. I'm a painter. I, mm -hmm. I create things. And people are like, well, you don't look like an artist. I'm like, <laughs> I'm supposed to have a beret on, you know what I'm saying, walking <laughs> right. around with like a silk shirt, like, yeah. So it's kind of like that was a hill that I had to get over. But it was either me make excuses after my man passed away or me go super hard. And it was like, yo, this dude was going super hard for me in the, in, in the real world time yeah. before I was like living it. To the point where he passed away, it was like no way in the world, bro, that I could be like making excuses or be like, oh, I ain't doing this no more because 
JP passed away or he died. I knew he would be rolling over in his grave if I ain't go to the to, to the moon with this talent. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I really did it, bro. I just gave myself like a couple years to like not care about nothing, wow. not care if nobody felt like he ain't getting money, he ain't a weirdo, he ain't this, he ain't that. All right, mm -hmm. okay, cool. I could be a weirdo. You know what I'm saying? Or I could be whatever. Not saying that people said that, right, right. but who knows what people would think when you're not doing the regular accord of what everybody else doing? Exactly. Dog, I was out sleeping on couches, bro. But on my Instagram, it looked like I was living the life. Living the life. But I was living the life. Right. Dog, I had no bills. I'm sleeping on the couch, meeting people, selling art, and that was that was one of the best times of my life, man. That in this in this whole journey. Well, a lot of people think that. What, 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 what attributes to success and wealth is having many things, right? But it's actually the freedom to be able to out, be out there making those connections and Dog. being out there selling your, 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 your art, something that you put all your passion Selling in. yourself. Right. You know what I'm saying? Being able to sell yourself, but not in a bad way. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, introduce yourself to people. Put yourself in rooms where you've never been. You know what Ooh. I'm saying? Like, dog, like stuff like this, I super appreciate being able to come on your platform and be able to talk. You know what I mean? Because right. people have been seeing my art for so long, but ain't never really understand the person behind this art. Yep. I've just been so blessed to get these opportunities before I even really started telling my story. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? So now it's like, it's almost like I have to tell my story because... It's so relatable, bro. It's so it relatable is. to, like, not being able to... I never went to school for art, bro. Yep. Like, I've never had any formal training for somebody to tell me how to do this or do that. Wow. It's just kind of crazy, you know what I'm saying? And I just... I owe it all to God. Honestly, Absolutely. God and just, like, so many great people I had in my life that, like, pushed me in that right direction. I love it. You know what I'm saying? What, what, was, the, what was the art piece or the situation or moment in your life that was career changing that took you up to the next level? Um, all right, so back to Oren. Mm -hmm. um, so I met Oren 2014-ish. Okay. And this is around the time JP passed in 13. Okay. So we always had these talks about him, New York gonna be your spot. I'm telling you, New York. And I'm like, no, LA. I'm thinking about Hollywood and all of course. this. He like, no, bro, it's billionaires walking around with sweatsuits on, you know, you don't even know. That was his talk, and right. I'm just like, Whatever, man. We party in New York, but I don't know. I don't, I don't really know. So I get a call from this guy, Oren, mm -hmm. um, on my inst no, probably on my Instagram. I, I'm not sure how it happened, but my girl at the time, she was doing, she's my wife now, but she was doing all my email stuff. Okay. Like, whoever would hit me through email and stuff like that, she would be, like, talking back like it was me because I never got back to people who emailed me. Right. Um, so she was holding it down on the back end while you was out there being the star that you are. Facts. Awesome. From the beginning, from the beginning. Okay. So um, Oren, Oren hit me up. Yo, I would like to acquire a piece and this, this, and that. So at the time, I was charging people a certain price. I'm not going to say the, the right, of course. You know what I mean? But I just like, I'm going to charge him double. Mm -hmm. Let me just see what he say. Not just like because it was a him or right. I was just like, okay, how do you, I didn't even know how Testing to like, market. you know, up your prices and things like that. I'm like, man, I'm sleeping on couches. I'm going here. I'm flying here to here. I know how much it costs to get back to LA and all this. Boy, I might have to just pay double. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I charged him double what I usually pay, charge. And he set the down payment so fast. And I was like, I got to meet him. So we not only that, I think I probably discounted that thing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't charge him enough. No, nah, no. Nah. See, you know what? I never thought like that right, right. because I knew it was way more than I was charging regardless. So I didn't think, I never was greedy. I never wanted to be greedy. It was just like, oh, wow. It was like an oh, wow moment. You feel me? So around that time, um, I'm working on this piece, and I start to uh, contact. I start to talk to him. Yo, um, I'm almost done. How are we going to, you know, get this? He like, yo, you can mail it, or you can come to, uh, you can come to New York. So JP always he in New York your spot. Somebody right. invite you to New York, bro. You better go and you better look good when you go up there. So this is all playing in my head mm -hmm. a year later. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna meet you up there. Just let me know where to meet you. We up there. I'm up there. Right. So I wind up going to wherever he told me to go, which is my man's Will's crib. It's like twenty, thirty million dollar townhouse at mm. the time. And I told you how. Connected with everybody. I connected with everybody, but I t I'm telling you how, like, JP mo schooled me to be around people with money. Right. So I wasn't around them acting extra. I was, like, right. just like, yeah, this house dope. Mm -hmm. Not like, yo, shit, this joint crate. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So I was kind of, like, in my mode. I already knew how to operate. So I'm just like, you know what? I wanted to stay. Right. But then my mission was to come up there, meet him, shake his hand, mm -hmm. make sure, you know what I mean, the money was right. So when I met him, 
He got the paint. He was like, "Oh man, this is crazy." He had like a party going on. It's more wet bottles. They had like a like the table in the kitchen was like, bro, from that Red Bull, that Red Bull uh, refrigerator, yep. all the way to this TV, bro. That was the that was crazy. the kitchen table joint, filled with more wet bottles. Girls running around this joint, and I'm like, this crazy. I'm like, yo, I need to stay at this joint. I need to be here. <laughs> but I didn't want them to be like, I didn't want to make them know that I wanted to be right. there. So I'm like, yo, I'm about to get on the road, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They're like, no, stay. Why don't you just stay? I'm like, bingo, it's over. It's <laughs> on it. now. I said, it's on now. <laughs> I get to like, I get to like actually like really meet them, mm-hmm. not just like business meet them. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So I go in the bathroom first thing. If you know you from Philly, I go in the bathroom. You, I go to the bathroom real quick. You give me the money. Count my money up. Okay, Absolutely. he get money. He ain't uh-huh. short me a bean or nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I go back out. And I just like he just introduced me to everybody. Um, from there, we just get really cool. Okay. You know what I mean? So it's like me calling him, him calling me. Yo, him, you want to come to the city? Yeah. Now I'm getting invited to come to the city all the time, and I'm like, Yo, wow. JP, this is kind of crazy. I'm talking to him like in the sky, like, yeah. Yo, this kind of crazy, bro. Like people want me to come to New York. Mm-hmm. So um, they had a bunch of events, a bunch of stuff going on, charity events. Um, they own the old concierge service. So mm-hmm. it was a lot going on with them. So they was like, yo, I think you need to be at this uh, charity event it was for an artist named Retina. I already knew his artwork because I was in L.A. I was in Miami. I, I, I was studying the art culture. Wow. I'm like, damn, I know about Retina. I love to come. Mm-hmm. Event after event after event. I'm telling them, now me and O cool. So it's like, O know that I play basketball now. I'm telling him my okay. story. He know about JP. He know about all this stuff now. So now he like, he called me one day. Yo, he you still play ball? I'm like, yeah, I still play ball. You know, I'm on my Philly shit. I'm like, yeah, who want to lose some money? You know what I'm saying? He like, <laughs> he like, he like, no, no, ain't that type of situation. Um, I got some people that, you know, you want to play at Carmelo Anthony's gym down the street from Madison Square Garden. Wow. Yeah, I come up there, yeah, I want ball. So me, me and Jay, me and Big Jay actually mm-hmm. drive up. At the time, the people playing ball is Floyd Mayweather, Chris Brown, Travis Scott. It's like the 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 one percent of like who. entertainers is all yep. in there playing ball. Wow. So I go in there, you know, JP already schooled me. I'm not going in there like, yo, what's up? You know what right. I'm saying? And at the time I had already did Floyd Mayweather a painting. So oh, did. I okay. literally got to meet him in person. Yo, I'm the boy that did the painting because mm-hmm. it was a gift. Uh one of his chefs I met, they gifted him this painting for Christmas. They was like, yo, I want you to do some, do your painting. That's dope. Do him man. a painting. He don't this he has everything, but he don't really have art like that. So that's how the situation with me and Floyd worked. But um, I introduced myself to Floyd. Yo, I'm the boy that did your painting. Did he was like, oh, wow, come on, let's take a picture. Did it. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I wasn't the one asking for pictures. You right, feel what right. I'm saying? So we wound up playing. Uh, you know, at that time, I probably wasn't playing ball all the time like I used to. So we won like four games straight, though. So a guy that I was playing with, shout out to my dog, Jeff Chen. Um, he was working for Jordan. He was working for a, a company that worked with Jordan, Jordan okay. brand. So he's we sitting on the bench. I'm mad that we lost. I'm like, bro, I'm out of shape, man. This corn is crazy. So he's like, bro, I know you can play ball. I'm like, yeah, man, I, I, that's what I, I did. That's you know what I'm saying? saying? So he was like, I just thought you was, knew you was an artist. He was like, you want to do a project with Jordan? Wow. I'm like, what? Yeah. So I'm trying to keep it cool, though. Like, mm-hmm. like yeah, that'd be dope. Because it wasn't, like, guaranteed to me. He was like, yeah, because I just had a meeting today. They're working in Philadelphia. Um, it's a project called A's for J's. They got a lot of big artists on the table. But you from Philly, and I know you now, I think you could probably get it, bro. I was like, bro, if you can get that, bro, that'd be amazing. I appreciate you forever, right? So week later, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He calls me. Yo, they picked you, bro. I'm like, they picked me? That's crazy. Oh, wow. Man. So that was the first time, like, that was the life-changing uh, moment. moment collaboration opportunity, however you want to call it, that was the life changing drone, bro. And it was like it was the most money I've uh, I've made at that time for mm-hmm. anything creative. It was kind of like all the money I've probably made in all those years of sleeping on couches and all them weeks all put together that in one sense. check. It was crazy, and I did something to give back to Philadelphia. Um, I had to do a huge piece. It was like 16 by 12. At that time, wow. I wasn't doing no pieces that big, yeah. so I had to do it in like eight days, bro. I didn't sleep. It was crazy, and each piece got broken up to different um, public schools. So oh, one okay. went to West Philadelphia High School, one went to MOTEP, and one went to Kensington High. Okay. I had to talk at the schools. It was a whole situation. It was a whole wow. situation. So that right there was the one. Shout out to Jeff Chin and, and Jordan Brand. That's dope, man. And the thing is, sometimes it's just showing up. Had you not showed up to that celebrity basketball match, 
yeah. you would not have gotten that opportunity. Yep. And then from there, it morphs into other opportunities. Bro, it's like, that's all it, that's all it is, though. It's all like showing up. no ego and showing up, bro. Yep. That's all it is. So, okay, so, so on the other hand, you, you talked about a life-changing moment career-wise. What was a piece that you produced that you put all of your emotions into that you, it was hard for you to sell it. It was hard for you to let go because you put so much into it. Hmm. Did you have, do you have a piece like that? You know what's so crazy? Um, I think the difference with me and like a normal artist mm -hmm. is that I understand business. Okay. So I've never been really attached to things that I create because I understand that it's not for me. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Um, it was a piece that actually, I'm all right, now you get, now you get me thinking. It was a piece that I did like right after the Jordan event. So so after the Jordan event, the money, I, the way I used the money was to put on my first solo show in New York. So I okay. used a lot of that money to display all this artwork I've been working on for a while. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I worked on a piece that was kind of like in, in likeness and memories of JP. Right. And I remember like crying as I painted this piece. Wow. And somebody bought it. And I felt, I was like, a piece of you just left. Damn. I was like, you know what I mean? Right. I, I, it's not like I wanted to keep it for myself, but I just know that it was like, I remember me staying up like nights and nights and nights working on that piece and like pouring my emotions into it because it was right after he passed away. He passed away in 13. Right. All this miraculous stuff started happening in 14. 14, 15 was like a movie. You know what mm. I'm saying? So it was in that time span and I was kind of like, damn, I should have charged him more for that. Cause right. I've never put that much of me into something, right. so it was like it was it was around 2014, 15, before it was like for my uh, my solo show, okay. and I still got the piece in my head. It was like it was like somewhat of like a human face, mm -hmm. and it had scars on the forehead from how many surgeries that he had. He oh, had four wow. he had four brain surgeries before he passed away at University of Penn Hospital. So I had put all that into the painting and I had wrote like a long message on the side. Somebody that bought it must have had somebody that passed from cancer or something because for you to buy that, you had to be connected. It wasn't just like, oh, that looked dope. You it's feel what I'm saying? Right there. Yep, this is the piece right here. See, that's why you got your right hand man right that's there. That's my man. dog. You just pull it right up. That's my dog. That's yeah, this, crazy. Yeah, this joint crazy. And yeah. I, know that, I noticed with your, with your pieces, you have some kind of um, it, it's some kind of significance to it, right? Obviously, JP Money Bear, right? That, mm -hmm. that, that's your boy JP, right? Mm -hmm. But then you also have this new uh, this new installation coming out, Teddy. Yeah, that's about your son. Yeah, right. So, um, describe that. Describe when, when you when you're conceptualizing these ideas and these pieces. Are you basing them off of family members, off of events, or is it just things that just come? You know, it's so out crazy. Of the blue? It's so crazy. All right. So I was just talking about this earlier too. So the things that I have to invest in the most. Um, if it's time, money, resources, whatever, it got to be something that strikes a chord with me. It can't just be something that's dope and it look dope. It got to be something where it's like, if this only sells two products, I still feel like I got this idea out. I right. still feel like I need it to release this. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So when it comes to like just doing stuff for just like, oh, this is dope and I want to release it, then it becomes like, oh, I got to sell a bunch of them because... I'm going to feel like it was a failure. Like, you know what I'm saying? So right. the thing with, you know, with JP the Money Bear, you know what I'm saying? That was that was something that my I had to release. My soul had to release that. You know okay. what I'm saying? I had to I had to make a, a something that reminded me of JP and had him live on forever through my art. You know what I'm saying? I got the opportunity to to go to China and create that wow. toy. You know what I'm saying? Free wow. off my just like a company saying, yeah, like shout out, shout out to, uh, shout out to Pop Life, shout out to Lev at Toy Tokyo. I'm, I, I lose names sometimes. <laughs> Lev at Toy Tokyo, thank you for everything, man. Like I had a conversation with him when I was just painting J, the JP the Money Bear, and I was telling him, like, you know, and I'm a fan of Calls and Ryan English and all these guys that do all these amazing toys. And I'm like, yo, I want to make JP a figure. He was like, I think he has the, you know, the characteristics to be a toy. It's, it's cool. It looks dope. And he was like, all right, I'm going to give you opportunities. So all these things, but opportunities on me having no ego and asking, uh, 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 like and asking e for something. And not even planning these opportunities. Think about it. They, you they, can't they plan this stuff. Right. You can't plan right this stuff. Right place, right time. Unless your family, unless you grew up with a family that's 
heirs of something. Right. You can't plan out this type of stuff. You, I mean, if, if my dad was a multi-millionaire, yeah, I could probably plan out, yo, I want to be an artist, I want to make toys. Yo, dad, I need 500000 You yep. know what I'm saying? It's yep. like, but other than that, it's like, it's all faith, bro. So at the end of the day, um, back to what you were saying, um, JP the Money Bear, I had to do that. You know what I'm saying? That was an opportunity that came to me. I had to go to China, dog, 24-hour flight. Yeah. That was crazy, 17 hours to South Korea, then a layover for seven hours, then I wasn't even there. And it was like, I might not make it back home on some real, like, thinking Philly. I'm like, bro, I never thought that I would make it this far outside of outside of my block. That's crazy. So um, that was something I had to do, JP the Money Bear. That was an amazing success. Still working on different stuff with that, toy-wise. We came out with, like, five different colorways. It's been it's just been amazing. So the second toy was my was my bulldog. Okay. So in the midst of me living in my mom's basement, flying from here to there, I had a bulldog. His name was Capone. And he was the he was like my best friend after JP passed away. Okay. So he passed away when he was like three and a half, four years old. Mm-hmm. You know, bulldogs, English right. bulldogs have a lot of health problems, breathing and all kinds of all everything. kinds of stuff. Right. So when he passed away, I was crushed, bro. I was kind of like, damn, everything around me dying yep. a little bit. You know what I mean? And I already had friends passing away from yeah. the street shit. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it was like, it was just too much going on. So when I thought of my second toy, I'm like, damn, I want to do Capone. I got to do Capone. So we released the first wave color, colorway of Capone last year. Did amazing. Okay. Uh, we working on the second colorway. And I got the opportunity with eBay for them to put the funding and everything behind my third toy. So I said... I could do. I could have did another JP. Yep. But I'm like, damn. I'd have had kids since all this and this whole journey. And I'm right. like, my son is different. I have a daughter as well. You oh, know what I'm okay. saying? She's a little smaller. She's three. He about okay. to be five. So I had a back to back. That's, that's, that was that's crazy. a good step. You gotta do it that way. I got a twelve I'm and done. a ten year old. I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. You gotta get him in. Get him out. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. So, um, so my son, bro, he's like. It's almost like I spit him out, bro. Okay. It's scary. It's scary, like, just down to, like, how optimistic he is, bro. Like, just, like, everything about him, he always smiling. It's, like, it's crazy. I get emotional when I think about it. So I'm, like, I got to put him into one of these toys at the stage that he at now. Because, mm. of course, he going to grow up. He going to become, like, yo, Dad, come on, man. I, I want to go with my friends. But right, right now, it's, like, I come home and they just run to me. Oh, Dad. Love you. And I'm like, damn, I remember mm. being his age but not having my dad around. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Right, right. So it's like I wanted to bottle up all that emotion and put it into a toy, and the slogan is to be a kid again. You know what I'm saying? Mm. If I could be a kid again, how would I do it? Right. If I had me as a dad, like where your dad don't have to work all day or if your dad is even, even around. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like how much better would I have been? Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, if I had that deep, direction. Man. So it's like, I'm like, damn, this got to be the next toy. What's his name? I have no clue. My wife's brother's name is Teddy. So he always be like, I want Teddy because Teddy cuts his hair. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I, want, I want Uncle Teddy to cut my hair. Teddy, Teddy, Teddy. And I just kept hearing his name in the midst of me trying to figure out this name. And I'm like, Teddy is the best teddy bear name ever. Perfect name, right. But I'm like, nah, it might be too, eh, it might be too perfect. Uh-huh. So I'm like thinking about other names, and I'm like, nah, Teddy it. So pretty much the toy is just inspired by, like, my son's youth, dog, his his energy, like, his his just everything, man, just, like, the stage that he at right now, and just, like, him not having to have a care in the world because of, like, all the stuff I've been through, all the stuff, all the, all the, the doors that got turned down in my face, mm-hmm. Now he can go. He can live somewhere different. He can. He don't have to right. sit on the steps and play street football. And he don't have to like you know what I mean. Walk to the corner store to get dinner mm-hmm. and ha- have to go through a fight just because he got curly hair right. or the, the stuff I had to go through. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's kind of like I just wanted to put that inside of a toy. So and I was saying this earlier too because we have my guy, my guy D Rock right there. D Rock. He's um he's working on some documentary stuff with me too. Okay. Um, the next toy is my grandma. Inspired by my grandma, so it's not gonna be my okay. grandma, but right, it's inspired right. by my grandmother, um, which passed away from cancer in 2017. Okay. So in the midst of my journey, bro, I'm having all these losses. My best friend died from cancer in 13. My dog dies in six, 15, 16. My grandma passes away in 17, mm. and I'm just like, 
What the fuck? In the it's next, tough. in the next, in the next day after my grandma's funeral, I gotta go somewhere and do something like this, wow. like where it's like I gotta talk about all this amazing stuff. But it's you like gotta be happy and put a smile. Yeah, on your face it's like it's like when you're hurt inside. It's just crazy. So yeah. I learned how to kind of like bottle my energy up and bottle my my emotions up and just like okay, this is business. Mm -hmm. Later on, you can cry. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. But I had to learn that in front of the camera. Wow. Not really like. Okay, let me take some time away, because mm -hmm. it was all going too fast. It was just crazy, like it was crazy. So and if you um, miss those opportunities, that you, it, it starts to go. It you can't to miss go no away. opportunity. You, can't, you right? can't. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, it was a lot, bro. It was a lot. So yeah, I just try to put like um, my emotions into these pieces. You know what I I'm saying? It, man. And I, I love it, and it shows. And I'm gonna be honest, man. And I'm not just saying this because you're you're, you're on the podcast. Um, I've, I, I speak very highly of you. Even before this this interview with regards to your artwork, right? I appreciate that. I actually, um, you know, it, it's my, my two favorite artists, period, mm -hmm. is you and Banksy, right? Damn. You and Banksy. Um, I got, I, I'll show it to you That's on Instagram crazy. afterwards. I have a picture in, uh, of me doing my model thing right in front right. of your artwork right there in Spain. Wow, okay, you okay, understand? So okay. I've been a fan of you for a long time. Wow. So just to hear your story, bro. I appreciate that, Just man. to hear your story is... It's very impactful, especially coming from Philly, because I come from North Philly, mm -hmm. Badlands, right? Yeah. And and, and I, I totally get it, man. Now, now I have kids, right? right? And now I know what it means to protect your children. You know, my kids don't have to worry about what I had to worry about growing up. Facts. And to, to see you doing it, man, it's it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Thank you, man. I appreciate that yeah. like, a lot. So let, let, let's go into the business side of things real okay. quick, right? Okay. How do you, I, I know you mentioned, and we're not going to talk about prices or whatever, but how do you, how do you put a cost towards your piece? You know, because sometimes, you know, obviously you put one price for one one particular buyer and then you go to another one. Like, how do you determine, like, is there a formula? Well, it's really based on square footage. Okay. It's based on square footage of the piece. Um, my pieces start at a certain price. Okay. So past that, size-wise, that's how we really determine different things. Got you. Um, right now I'm starting to dabble and dibble and dabble with different galleries and things like that. Mm -hmm. For the first five, six years, we didn't really do any galleries. It was all, like... Um, all my investments going into like me renting out this space, me having somebody curate the spot, me doing all the brochures, me doing like not me but my team. I'm right. saying me as my right. team and everybody working with us. Um, it was all of us because it was like I just didn't see if I did all this hard work, I didn't see my I couldn't see myself splitting fifty percent with a gallery just because they had a building. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm bringing most of the people that's buying the artwork in. Right. So all it they was, doing is housing it. They housing it, mm -hmm. and they're sending stuff out to, you know, they're doing right. their gallery thing, not mm -hmm. taking anything away from the gallery, and they're helping um, legitimize what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But I just didn't think that was 50%. Right. Maybe 20, not 50. 50 okay. is like you buying the canvases, the paint, and I'm just doing my talent, and you getting it sold. That's 50%. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's that, I just didn't see it, you know? And me just knowing business and thinking business, I'm like... It's only going to help me mm -hmm. become who I am to do that. You know what I'm saying? Just basically just based off of um, me having the freedom to take different opportunities. Now, if I was working with a gallery, they would have never let me do Tops Project. They, right. I, I'm not saying that they wouldn't have let me do, but it would have been a, it would have been a sitting at the table and, no, we don't think this, and no, we don't think. But that was one of the most successful things that I've ever did in my life. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That was That got me into a different community of people that was like, that didn't care about art on their walls. Or, you know, right. it's like it's like my art goes further than somebody buying something for their walls. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Like, the watch that I have on is created by me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a consumer. I'm a consumer, then a creator. Well, I'm a creator and a consumer at the same time. Right. But it's like, sometimes you gotta like, you gotta like, set yourself aside. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, okay, I'm not the best artist in the world. I can't, I'm, I'm not gonna paint a Mona Lisa. You feel what I'm saying? Right. It's a person for that, though. But can I design a, a, a private jet, probably? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I design the next watch that might be on the level of a Rolex over time? Maybe. Right. Can I design some shoes? I can design all that stuff. I never thought I could design a baseball card. When I got the opportunity, the first thing I said was, how the hell am I going to It's this small? It's crazy. How am I going to do that? So I had to learn digital art. Mm -hmm. So I'm teaching myself in front of the camera, bro. Those, that whole project could have been horrible. They could have said, yo, why we picked this dude? Wow. He don't know what he's doing. But me and my team sat down, and I'm like, bro, I got I to gotta learn how to, from working on a piece that's six feet, 
I got to make that into a palm-sized card. Mm. How do I do that? Dog, it took so many weeks. But the good thing about it was um, it was inside, it was in a pandemic. So we was locked in my studio for a year. Wow. Going crazy. The best ideas, the best everything. Bro, like, we didn't know if the world was ever going to come back. Right. You can't even get in somewhere to go eat without showing your car and have a helmet on. Man. Like, I ain't never seen nothing like that in my life. So it was like, bro, we lived in that studio. You feel what I'm saying? Right. So it was like all these different things and different ideas came from just being locked in the studio when we couldn't go outside. And I had to force myself to learn how to translate from physically painting and mm-hmm. writing to the way home an iPad, uh, Procreate, and all these other different things that, you know, you do digital art on. Right. It's like, bro, if I'd have been lazy and just was like, oh, man, this ain't, I don't know if this for me. I'm going to just pass up on this tops thing. Yeah. Bro, it's like that would have been totally like the worst thing I'd ever did in my life. That's crazy. But back to not using a gallery, these are opportunities that I took upon myself, me and my team, to be like, this is a good situation for us. Let's do it. Absolutely. Not have somebody else, not to have a gatekeeper say, no, people aren't going to look at you as a real artist if you do this project or do that project. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, I don't care who look at me like nothing. I'm from Philly, bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if somebody that I don't know looks at me a certain way. Mm-hmm. My kids is going to be cool. I'm doing this for my family and my and my team's family. Yep. You understand what I'm saying? And that's all that matters because that's what they're doing it for. So I just wanted I just wanted to have the freedom and control and just have and hold my destiny in my own hands. You know what I'm saying? Love it, love it. And and the thing is, you also give you also give new imagery behind what co- is considered a real artist, right? Because if you really look at what would be considered a real artist, Vincent Van Gogh died broke, you know, and he died he cut cut his ear off, died broke, right? Yeah. Then you look at all these other artists; they were starving artists, the epitome. Mm-hmm. You are the complete opposite of that. Independent. I'm still starving. You still starving, but <laughs> but 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 you ain't Vincent Van Gogh when it I comes to the you. money. I feel you, you know. I feel you. I feel but you. you know his stuff ended up amassing millions once he died. You get to experience, you know, the 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 fruits of your labor now. That's a blessing. You that's know, a, that's which a is total a huge blessing. blessing. And that's one of the reasons why I thought art wasn't the thing because every artist that I heard about was dead. Right. So it was kind of like. That don't sound lit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, after you die, you, everybody start loving your stuff. It's kind of like, so you got to, like, work a job in the midst of yeah. living and just putting out, producing all this work. Crazy. So I don't know. That's, like, one of the things that always kicked me off. It was like, maybe art ain't the thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because right. everything else is kind of like you can, you can live and enjoy it. It seemed like art wasn't the thing. You know what I mean? And then right. you had to be, like, told what to do. Yeah. Like, creating told what to do i was like that's the hardest thing ever it's like somebody's telling you what to do Mm -hmm. and you're like okay and you gotta make it like you gotta like please them with what you did it's like that that's that's not it so yeah so it's a blessing bro it's a blessing so let's talk about the tops right um how were you able to get into partnership with them i mean obviously baseball cards are back out again Mm -hmm. and the way i found out that they were coming back in style was gary v was talking about that he was saying that baseball cards is back out next thing you know my son's talking about i was like hold on he done influence (laughs) my my kids shout out to gary v right shout out to gary v but um yeah how were you able to partner up with tops um so I'm not exactly sure because mm-hmm. I don't know how these meetings go or who's right. going to get thrown out or anything like that. But um, I have a great I have a great team, okay. and they also represent other artists that are like bigger than me, I yep. would say, or been in the game longer than me. And the opportunity came for a couple artists that they represented, and I think it was probably like, "Yo, well, check this guy out," mm-hmm. and they was like, "Wow, wow, I didn't even know about this guy." You know what I'm saying? Right. On that type of vibe. So it was kind of like. I don't know. One of those meetings where somebody introduced some like a relationship from a relationship yep. introduces what introduces my gift to somebody, and then they take take onto it. A good reputation as well, right? Because you yeah. said you got good reputation. If you really look at it, you had good reputations with everyone. You know, growing up with all of your friends, all of your connections, mm-hmm. which which allowed you to travel and do what you got to do. And I guess it's proceeding itself now because you also connected with what Nike and Mercedes mm-hmm. and 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 the what the NFL. The NFL. Um, shout out to, to the uh, Deshaun. Mm, so, Deshaun Jackson. No, Desha- Deshaun Watson. Oh, Deshaun Watson. So okay. so me and Deshaun linked up probably like 2020. I'm not sure when was it. 20. 2020. Um, shout out to Wayne PCNY, my dog. That's actually mm-hmm. Orange's brother. Um, so they both managed me at one time. Okay. So 
whenever they get into these situations with all these cool people, especially young cool people that know of the culture, right. it's always like, you don't know King? You don't know King Solidain? So it was one of those situations where he knew, um, shout out to David Mugetta too. So David Mugetta is the most major um, sports agent in the NFL right now. Young wow. African-American guy, crazy, right? So he was having dinner with them and all that type mm-hmm. stuff. So he introduced me to them. And then from then, it was like me and uh, me and Deshaun, we started doing charity things together. So we okay. did a bunch of charity stuff out in Texas. We had a charity event. We had a car rally. And then we got cool. And he was like, bro, I'm getting all these um, different deals thrown at me. And I'm really into, like, the things that people create. So, you know, right. some, some athletes are just like, man, whatever you do, I don't care. I wear it, whatever. Pay yeah. me. He's like the type of guy where it's like, that ain't really hot, though. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, I got a Nike situation going on. I got a Beats by Dre situation going on. And I think we was doing something with uh, Nickelodeon and SpongeBob at the time. Okay. So we was working with Nickelodeon and SpongeBob. They was introducing the NFL to the new generation of kids. Gotcha. So it was a whole program and a project going on. And Deshaun just pretty much was like, yo, I want you to just do, do what you do. And that's how, you know, the Beats by Dre happened, the Nike cleats happened. And, and all that type of stuff. Man, I'm, I'm just hearing throughout this entire interview, you just showing up. You showing up, you present, you're, you're being put in front of these opportunities, and you are saying yes at these opportunities. Bro, you're I'm not saying, saying I can't do nah, it. Nah, I ain't saying I can't do you're, you're not saying You're not being intimidated by going. You and I was at Rittenhouse Square last week, right? Mm-hmm. The ball on the square, mm-hmm. right? Yep. You know what I, I told my mans? I said, man, I feel like we was on the third floor of the, the, the third level of the Titanic, and they let us up. <laughs> you hear me? It was like that. I've never seen nothing like that in Philly. Never seen Shout anything Shout out to my like dog, that. John, man. Never Philly seen man. anything like that because I look at it, and I'm like, man, we all came from North Philly. We came from the slums. And then to be amongst all of these elegant, fancy people was nuts. It's like almost like we got to pinch ourselves sometimes. Yeah. Definitely. So 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 that whole you know that whole situation there just even meeting you before the interview was that dope, was deep you know that, that was, was that was like full circle that was supposed to happen that that it had to happen yeah it had to happen definitely so what I want to do is um, talk about your talk about habits and routines that you feel as though have made you successful because obviously you have a creative mind you also have a business mind as well what what is it that that's what is it that helps you continue to be successful. Is it self-discipline? Is it timing, time management? Like, what do you feel? Hmm. I think it's, uh, honestly, man, I think it's a relationship with God, bro. Mm. Because at the end of the day, I remember, like, really having, like, somewhat of an out-of-body experience when I was okay. at my mom, living in my mom's basement, bro. I prayed for all this. Wow. I remember praying for everything. I, pray, I remember praying for, like, first it was relocation. It was relocation running into the right people that understood my gift and being able to fund the dream. Almost if I if I was like almost if I was like a Porsche Carrera but I ain't had no gas. Right. It was almost like I know I can do zero in sixty seconds, but I don't have no gas. And I can't use eighty nine. Mm-hmm. I need premium. I need ninety three. Right. You feel what I'm saying? And I'm like, I'm praying for all this, bro. Praying for all this. Poem was there. Because Pone, I remember getting up from prayer, and Pone was looking at me like like a dog, stupid dog face. Like, <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? What so you doing? I pray for all this, bro, and I already had a hell of a work ethic, so it wasn't nothing else I can like be like hyping on camera, bro, like, right. oh, I do this and I do that. Mm-hmm. No, it's like I play basketball, so I had a work ethic. I used to work out. I, I went out and shot in the mornings. I worked on my handle. I did push-ups. I did, I did everything I was supposed to do for whatever I needed to do. Did anybody have to tell you to do it, or were you Nobody. self-motivated? Uh, my step-pop, my stepdad okay. at the time, he, you know, he got me along to get that mentality. Got gotcha. you. Like, to build it into like, a second nature. Yeah, like, bro, if you don't be doing push-ups and you don't do this, mm-hmm. this is what they're going to do on the court. And he used to push me and shove me, you know what I'm saying? I'd mm-hmm. be like, oh, all right, all right, I get it. Right. So you got to have direction. But he put me along the lines to, like, really – Really, just be the person I am, man. And he came at the perfect time. I think uh, my mom got married to uh, married to him when I was probably like nine, eight, nine, eight, nine. So wow. that's a real big age where it's kind of like you're gonna be soft or you're gonna kind of be the person you're gonna be. And I was getting to the soft, my mom, the nurturing, the, yeah, yeah, like yeah. oh, if I fall, oh my god, yeah. yo, I don't want to play no more. Right, right. Like, mm-hmm. and he came at the perfect time. We're like, man, you don't get out. Mm-hmm. You don't. Uh, uh, uh. He's from the street. He's from West right. Philly too. So it's kind of like. That was perfect for me, man. It was like everything I needed. So um, 
back to the question. What was the question again? A habit or routine. Oh, uh, habit or routine, go. man. Um, having a relationship with God. Okay. Never getting super overwhelmed by something that happens good. Like, mm. just like if like if I score 40 points, right, and I've scored 40 points in the games. Right. I don't, I do, it's not like I wake up the next day and don't work out. Gotcha. Because it's like, oh, I had 40, man, I can chill, I can chill for a week. No, it's, day it's the same thing. It's like mm -hmm. next, I might have had 40, but we lost. Right. Or I might have 40 with four turnovers. Or I might have 40 with no assists. Like, it's always something better that you can get better at. So right. I've always grew up like, it ain't never good enough. And you ain't in the NBA. Mm. So it's like, oh, you had 40, somebody else had 60. I remember I had 50 points one time, and, and I played when DeWan Wagner played from Camden. Oh, wow. So the, okay. the, the day I had 50, he scored 100. Damn. So my article was like this. He had the front page. Ooh. So I always remember stuff like that where it's like, damn, it's always somebody that's going to be. He had 100 points. Wow. You feel Wilt, what I'm saying? Will Chamberlain numbers. Will Chamberlain numbers. I had 50. I was hyped. Oh, my God, I had 50. Watch, it's going to be in the paper tomorrow. And I had an interview at the end of the game. Right, right. High school sports show. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and he had 100. That's crazy. And I said, damn, that joint made my joint feel like 20. Wow. That made my 50 feel like 20. And we won the game. Buzzer beater. I hit a buzzer beater. It's like, so I learned early to never get, like, just caught up in your own stuff. Just right. always keep working. Keep working. Keep working. Keep working. Because you never know. You never know who's going to be in the crowd. You never know. Just anything, you know what I'm saying? It's right. not even about who's gonna be in the crowd. It's just about like pressing yourself to the limit, taking yourself to that next level. Yep. Like I, 50, I don't think 50 was my my highest level. Mm -hmm. That's the most points I've ever scored in the game. But I think I could have maybe scored 100 on the right team, right situation, me feeling right, me feeling <laughs> good, got some extra sleep that night. Yep, you know what yep, I mean? Yep. So you know, it's always striving for better. What can people look out for King Saladin in the future? What are some future projects you have? going on i know um, you got teddy coming out with mm -hmm. ebay collectibles right yeah um actually i got i got a solo show going on in philly it's a smaller show okay uh it's at corridor gallery it's, a, it's like in fishtown uh i think that's gonna be in november so i'm talking about a different body of work it's about me in basketball me okay. growing up in west philly me so it looks totally different it's something it's another one of those projects that i had to get out okay i didn't need to it's not jp the money bear it's not nothing like that it's yep. almost like like if an artist is making music, you mm -hmm. feel what I'm saying? And it's right. like, yo, I've always loved salsa music. Uh -huh. I'm doing a salsa album. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's, like it's totally yeah. different, but it's like it's, it was something that was inside of me that I wanted to get out. So I'm doing that in November. Um, it's a lot going on, man. Gary V, I can't really talk about that too much. That's very okay. under wraps. Shout out to him and everybody at V Friends. Um, my NFT project is coming out as well in nice. October. Okay. So this is my second NFT. Um, we're building a community. I'm doing everything that I need to do this time. The first one was just like, hey, you should do an NFT. I got somebody right. to make it. I didn't understand about anything. I didn't understand about utilities and community mm -hmm. and just like everything you say, you got to live it out. You got to make sure right. these people get what they're supposed to get. So I've never... I've never been this deep really into something that I just learned. Okay. You know what I mean? Art's been always over time for me. Um, the NFT space is the last the last nine months have been very, very critical. And it's been amazing. I've been able to sit down with a person like Gary Vee, who's at who's a well in this in, in this space. You know what I'm saying? Man, he created and, this whole vlogging, you know, for the businessman and things of that sort. It's man. crazy. It's crazy, man. And and me like manifesting that and it actually happening because I've been following mm -hmm. Gary Vee for about two, three years now. Me you too. know what I'm saying? And yep. looking at those those um Instagram reels and things like that when he's just talking and I'm just like this dude is amazing. And you know everything, what every, you know what's crazy is, is that everything that he has spoken about before it happened, it became a thing months later. Bro. I'm talking about NFTs. I wasn't, he was the first person I heard about NFTs from. Next thing you know, everybody says it now. Yeah. You know, and then yeah. even with, with the reels and TikTok, he was like, listen, you got to focus your efforts on TikTok. Next thing you know, everybody starts blowing up on TikTok. He it's is, crazy. He's a guru, bro. He, he he's, is. He's somebody that I'm blessed to be around i can't wait till i can spend more time with him because mm -hmm. we just talking right now it's like the business and what we're trying to like accomplish but right. once i can maybe like have that relationship with him where it's like we just kicking it and that i'm is. getting those gems and like bro that's priceless man that type of stuff is priceless bro man i'm so proud of you man for for, for those under a rock how can people connect with you um <laughs> you said under a rock um <laughs> Uh, well, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter, King Saladin, at K-I-N-G-S-A-L-A-D-E-E-N. -E -E um, same as Twitter. I haven't did TikTok yet. I started I started, okay. a, started a TikTok account and everything, but 
I gotta like set aside time to really or have a team. It's a lot of do work that, with social media, and then I just man. jump in when mm-hmm. I gotta jump in, and then they, because yeah. it's like it takes too much time, and I'm just trying to really super focus on everything that we got going mm-hmm. on. Oh, shout out to Kenya Barris. So Kenya Barris is one of my major collectors and friends that I've been able to get a major relationship with. Okay. I'm working on a Netflix special with him. Nice. Um, well, a Netflix movie. Um, it's crazy. I can't really talk too much okay. about that either, but. These are just all from like great relationships, bro. It, it's like it's like crazy, man. It's crazy. So what about so if somebody wanted to purchase any of your artwork? How would they be able to do that? What's the process? Um, so the process is usually um, get in contact with Orin. Okay. Because a lot of people DM me and stuff like that. Right, like, right. yo, I want a piece. What's your price? Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I can't really <laughs> get in that. So just you know, I have on my on my bio, mm-hmm. you know, for inquiries and things like that of art. Get in contact with Orin. That's yeah. how it usually works. Um, it's a few galleries that I'm working with as well. Okay. Um, WCC Gallery. Oh, we're doing an art talk there too in October. That's going to be pretty cool in That's Manhattan. Dope, man. um, it's a lot going on, man. But really, just um, Instagram is really good. Okay. My email uh, mm-hmm. at studio, uh, studio at King Saladin Art dot com. There you go. You so got that's it. that's my email. Um, that's that's really great. I can, you know, I just started using, utilizing that. I was okay. never an email person. Oh my gosh, um, I just started doing that. So that's really, that's really how to get in contact. You are gonna have my contact too, so people can hit you up. Man, you know I what appreciate mean? you, brother. Let me tell you, I'm very fortunate. I'm excited that King Saladin was able to bless me with his appearance on the Dosinko project. Oh, you, you bless me, bro. Keep doing what you're doing. I Thank love you, it. Brother. Your platform is getting bigger and bigger. I told you I was watching you with Oskino the other know, the other man. day, Thank and then I met you, you like, oh, this the because Orange said, yo, you want to do this guy's podcast in Philly? Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, who, what's his name or whatever? Right. He has sent that clip. Uh-huh. So then I was just watching, boy. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I want to do it. Let's man. do it. Let's do it. And, and you know what? It all it all came from an idea. I just wanted to talk to interesting people, mm. especially people from Philadelphia. That's the way I wanted to grow it, you know. And then mm-hmm. obviously. It's expom- I'm going to Florida on 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 Friday to go uh, interview Justin Silva. He's a comedian on TikTok. Got three three million followers or wow. what have you. That's We're big, doing man. His thing, man. That's yeah, big. Man. Travel, bro. Try, you man. gotta get that Philly greatness outside of Philly. It's over. It's over from there, bro. That's it's it. It's over. Man. It's over. Shout out to Oskino too, man. Shout out to Oskino. This camera cut, so I'm gonna come over here. We got planes to catch. We ain't got time for the nonsense. <laughs> all day, all day. <laughs>